everybody this is pun frugal streamer well meld studio for windows the beta just went live today the developers for meld studio are sending links out you can sign up for it on their website i will provide a link down in the description below where you can download your own copy but listen meld studio is a great software similar to obs it's a piece of broadcast software that you can stream and record with but it's a fresh new look something that i think is simpler to use but i want to show you you know just kind of an overview of it to get you familiar with it so that you can see everything it can do because it has a lot of nice features that i think you'll appreciate that are built in and a cleaner design that makes things easier so let's get into the video okay so this is meld studio what i like about meld studio is its simplicity and how it's laid out the cleanness of the user interface and how they have set it up to use things like audio without having to go through a bunch of different layers to get to the settings that you need they've made it really easy which is something that i think is an improvement over things like obs studio where it takes you like two or three clicks to really get to what you need here for the most part everything is within one click which is really nice so what i'll do is i'll start top to bottom left to right and just kind of show you the different areas first of all you obviously you got your menu areas down here or up here across the top left uh it's very simple nothing crazy here obviously you can do certain things here preferences being the big one that everybody's going to see here and this is where you would set up your stream settings now obviously look at the settings here compared to what you would use for obs studio a whole lot more simple easy to use uh, right now hardware accelerated encoder nvenc is currently supported only um, I'm hoping that the, it will support AMD and Intel here shortly, but for right now, just NVENC is, is supported for hardware accelerated encoding. Obviously for software encoding, you could use your CPU, but settings are a whole lot simpler than OBS, which is nice. Plugins is gonna be something that I think is coming in the future, but this, you know, it's more of a placeholder right now. Hopefully we'll see plugins uh, support, you know, certain certainly third party plugin support like OBS Studio. Audio here, you're basically just selecting your output monitoring device. And then they've got, you know, some transition effects here, smart guide, uh, which is, you know, your snapping threshold, you know, your snapping line color, that sort of thing, which is kind of helps you on your canvas, uh, which you'll see here in a little bit. But that is it. That's how simple things are when it comes to settings in Meld Studio. And the quality is fantastic. Now across the top here, obviously you can copy paste your view. You can take a screenshot here and then you have the help menu where you can get logs for troubleshooting that you can send to the developers. You got their discord, you can share feedback. And then you got the about here, which, you know, will tell you the current uh, build and everything that you have. This little area right here is called layers. Uh, if you're familiar with OBS Studio or Prism Live Studio, these are your sources, okay? So very similar to uh, what OBS Studio has. So currently they offer video devices. This would be video capture, a display capture, media sources. You got photos or images. You got a browser source. You got the duplicator, which is, is basically you're just copying a source. You have a text source, you have markdown, and you have rectangle. Rectangle's pretty neat because you can, you know, make this and you can use it to add borders to sources and that sort of thing. But this is what they're calling layers, the same thing as sources. And within that, you can obviously lock your sources or lock your layers. You can hide them or show them using the eyeball. Very similar to, uh, you know, what OBS does. You can also right click and you can obviously move them up and down. You can also click and drag them uh, wherever you need them in the in the uh, list here. And obviously, like layers, the lower down you go, then they're going to be below the other sources. So if you have a background, you're obviously going to want your background here on the bottom. But here you can duplicate, you can hide, you can lock, you can you know restretch it, that sort of thing. You can rename it. Uh, pretty cool. 
Down here in this area right here is your scenes. Same thing as OBS Studio where you can set up all your scenes and then add all of your layers within each scene. So you can see here, I've got different scenes. I've got a cam only. This is my gaming PC. This is my stream PC and you know, every other things that I've, I gotta obviously adjust, but you can see uh, that's how these work. And again, you can rename, you can duplicate a scene or you can delete them by right clicking. Here in the middle, We'll get back to the starting scene here. Here in the middle, this is your program or your canvas, whatever you want to call it. Here you can also select your sources if they're not locked and move them around if you want to. I'll unlock these so you can just kind of see what they do. But here you can select a source. Now the cool thing that Meld has done here, um, if they, they've added some more integration into this that you don't get with OBS Studio. For instance, if I were to say add a rectangle, let me add a rectangle source here. And within this source, I'm gonna blow this up. If I wanna crop this, instead of doing Alt and left clicking, you can double click it. And then you get your cropping that you can then adjust. And then you can double click it to get out of it. Also, they've got these little buttons right here this is a radius and you can actually add a radius or you can even make a circle so it's like a mask all kind of built into this which is really a neat little feature that they've added that is nice you can also use snapping snap grid and this is your this is what i was just talking about earlier where you can align this up and it gives you an idea where you are going to align this center to center and you use these little x's to kind of figure out where that is and you have an X at a center point on your source and then you have the grid lines that shows you various points that you can use to align and, and it's really nice to that you can figure out that exactly the center point on your canvas no matter what the size is using these grids that's what this snapping line color and your smart guides is was those lines there all right so then across the bottom obviously you have your audio mixer now here you can actually add audio inputs across the bottom just by simply right clicking and then selecting whatever device you have. And these are all the devices that Windows is recognizing as audio sources. The hardware audio sources will come in as tracks, so track one, track two, track four here listed, track three. And then you're in your layers, if that has an audio source, well, it will match whatever the name of your layer is. Now, typically they'll be named like if you bring it in a rectangle, it's going to be named rectangle one, but you can go in and rename that. And if you were to rename this rectangle one and it had an audio source, well, then it would be, it would change down here on the audio as soon as you were hit enter here on rectangle. Uh, so this media source, for instance, would you know, would have a, um, an audio source to it if I had it enabled like so. That's what's really nice is you can also disable the audio and enable audio right here on the front UI, which is really neat. But you basically have unlimited audio tracks. You can add as many tracks as you want for however much you need to get a nice custom audio mix. Near zero latency on your metering here too is also really nice. And here you can edit and you can, if you needed to go to uh, make this a mono source, you could. And you can also have a, you know, left and right input for channel one, channel two, which is really nice. And you can also add a delay right here if you're having some syncing issues with your audio and video, and you could use this to sync them together. Also, you have monitoring right here on the front face by clicking the cue. And you can see now the my microphone's coming into this stream input here. You can also mute each the, each of your tracks right here on the front. Really nice. Obviously, volume control here. And this is uh this is scaled in uh in uh in decibel full scale. So peaking would be at zero here. You have a level here where it shows you what your mat your max peak is. And that's really it. Uh, it's nice and simple audio interface. To the right, this is called the inspector. 
and the inspector is basically giving you your parameters for each of your different layer sources. So you can see here, for instance, I'll select this text layer that I've got. And here, this is, that just so happens to be my Instagram name. You can go in and you can change the text. Obviously, you have a ton of text based on what you have you know, set up in Windows. You can change the size. You can do things like the opacity of it if you wanted to. You can also change the color of it if you wanted to. It's a really nice interface for text source. You also have a screen picker color if you wanted to do that. So it works out really nice and it's super easy. Also inside of your inspector is all of your effects for each of your sources. For instance, if I were to go and let's get rid of this rectangle. You can see my camera here has some effects built into it. So let's find the camera here, which is the tail air. And here I have a Gaussian blur added and I have black and white added. You can just get to your effects by hitting the plus and then you can see all the different effects that are available inside of Meld Studio currently. And they're adding to these all the time, which is really cool. Uh, you got black and white, obviously that's what I'm using here. You got brightness and contrast. You got this bold uh, effect that kind of, you know, makes your uh, source kind of rounded. For say, if you were using like a, you're trying to do a retro TV screen, you could use that. Chroma key, directional blur, drop shadows, fill, fractal noise, blur, Gaussian blur, glow style. I mean, you got everything. Gradients, they're all in here and they're fully customizable. To so once you start the effect, to a, you know change the effect and bring the parameters up for that effect that you can change, you click on these this little slider icon here to the left and it brings up the interface where you can then adjust all of those. So it's really cool. As I really like that a lot, obviously with Gaussian Blur. And the cool thing about Gaussian Blur in this one, uh, it's very efficient compared to other Gaussian Blurs that I've used. It does not use a lot of resources, which is nice. But, you know, obviously you can see there, you can change the blurriness and get crazy. Um, but yeah, I like this a lot. The effects in Meld Studio are really good. And there's a ton of things that you can do to add some nice custom looks to your live stream, which is cool. Now, there is one more thing that I really want to talk about. And that is called radial transitions. This is something that's really new. Um, to access it, you can use the tab key on your keyboard, or if you have a Stream Deck Plus, well, they have a Stream Deck plugin for this for Melt Studio, and Stream Deck Plus really hones in on this because it has a dial that works with this UI here, which is really nice. But it layers all of your different scenes, and then what you can do is you can build transitions from each scene, you can do transition over. This is kind of what transition override in OBS Studio is. This is how you would control what transitions goes to each scene. Uh, and you could do different custom ones for each one or a series of them whatsoever. Uh, but it's really cool. And again, you have in the inspectors over here, you can you know, go in and then select a scene and change what it is, including move transition, which is a really nice transition that they've added to Meld Studio. You got cut, you got fade, you got morph, and you got the move. And I've used move transition in a few of my scenes that I have been using. Now to get out of the inner, get out of that, you can hit the uh, tab key or then hit the dial on your Stream Deck Plus if you wanted to use that. But you can see here now, if I select any of these transitions, then the transition that I have set for each of these scenes is in effect. And you could do that and, you know, obviously use the dial to do the transitions instead of using the, my mouse that I'm currently using now. Uh, but it's a really neat way of doing transition override, you know, differently than what OBS Studio would do. So Melt Studio, super easy to understand, I think. I really like it a lot. Now, there's a lot that, you know, is left on the table that they can add to Melt Studio to make it even better. And I've given a number of suggestions, including the NDI support, 
things like being able to uh, remember in Windows folders, you know, where you were last at instead of having to go and, and at a top layer folder and continuing to keep selecting down. Little things like that, quality of life, uh, things that make Build Studio even better. And the great thing is, is the developers are listening and they're constantly adding. They, there is a huge list of things that they're already working on, many of which I've talked to them earlier. Uh, a couple months back when I was first introduced to Mel Studio and they've either already implemented it or it's on the list to get at it. So they're doing it and I'm really happy to be using this. Now, who is Mel Studio for? Well, I think Mel Studio is probably going to be for about 80 to 90% of the people that are live streaming. There is a small group of live streamers that have very sophisticated streams and are what I would call OBS power users that use very sophisticated settings uh, and plugins to give their live stream just, you know, a crazy level of customization compared to most people. Well, I think Mel Studio is catering toward the rest of the people that aren't going to have that. They just want a nice live stream that they can do customization to, but they don't need a ton of plugins to be able to do it. They can use the built-in effects that are inside of Meld Studio to get done what they want. That's who I think the developers of Meld Studio are targeting, and that's by far most people that are live streaming today. I'm looking forward to seeing what Meld Studio offers here in the future, and I am using Meld Studio exclusively to live stream now. You can live stream on Twitch, you can live stream on YouTube, you can live stream anywhere that currently supports RTMP. Soon there will be uh, you know, API integration where you can use your login information to your broadcast service and you know set it up that way, but currently it is manual. You have to set in your key and your URL, but that's easy to do super simple and you know it's nothing difficult so let me know what you think everybody if you want to uh you know try this yourself then make sure you go to the website i'll provide the link down below where you can sign up for debate or yourself and get it as i said they are emailing out the links now where you can download this uh it does automatically update now so you don't have to continue downloading beta uh, versions as they update it it will automatically update as they become available and they do a good job at informing you on that on social media so keep that keep an eye out you know on twitter for them uh, i would definitely recommend you know following them on twitter at streaming with meld and you know keep following what they're doing because they're really awesome people so that's it for me i hope you enjoyed this video and let me know what you think about meld studio and if you are uh, looking at switching from obs i think this is a great option out there and it's free so you can't beat it right all right everybody have a good one we'll see you later